to open up the meeting. Um, I think the first thing I'd like to do is to welcome um, a new select board member, Chris Codius, and also a new town clerk, Robin Durkee. Who, Hello. <clears throat> uh, welcome to uh, your first select board meeting as you're in your new roles. <laughs> Whoopie doo. Um, here we go. Um, <laughs> So, um, are there any adjustments at all to the agenda? I don't have anything. I'm going to add one thing, um, and I and I think I'll have this written in the agenda. In the future, there always seems to be a few things that um, people think of during the course of the meeting that that we discuss towards the end. So, I'm going to start adding to the agenda other business, um, just in case there's something else that some we used to do that back back a while ago. Um, so um, that, that'll be something new. And, and um, if there is other business, then we've made that adjustment for tonight. So we just do it anyway, usually. But um, I can't think of anything else. Seems like there was another update that I wanted to mention. And I guess if I remember it during the meeting, I'll add it in other business. <laughs> um, any public comment at all? I don't hear any, All right? Um, do I hear a motion to uh, approve the bills to the town? So moved. <clears throat> a second? Just a second. Okay. All those in any discussion at all about the bills? Um, then hearing none, I'd like to make a motion. Um, uh, I'd not make a motion, but any, all those in favor of, of um, Approving the town bills, uh, say aye. 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 Okay. Um, and then do I hear a motion to approve the minutes to the February 22nd, uh, 2021 select board meeting? I'll move that. Okay. And I guess I'll second it because technically, Paul, you and I were the two the select signers. board members. That yeah, at the time. Yeah. Um, any discussion at all about the minutes? Um, Okay, um, all those in favor say aye. 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 Okay, so the minutes are approved. Um, and then the next thing on the agenda, this is something that we typ typically do um, after town meeting is um, just kind of uh, decide um, who will be the select board chair. Um, if anybody has, you know, we'll also be uh, kind of welcoming Chris and see if he has any questions for anyone or if anyone has any questions for him on getting started. Um, I have so been the select board chair. Person. What's that, Paul? And they will actually get to meet in person. Yes. Yeah. Hopefully sometime. Who knows when? Um, so Paul, usually um, I always kind of offer or have in the past when a select board member gets to be, have a couple years under their belt, um, just to inquire if they would like uh, an opportunity to be the chair of the select board. Well, I don't know if I can do it justice with my time. I don't know, has your time better than mine right now? It probably is, and, and I knew that would be a concern. Yeah. Um, for you, and I'm, I'm fine with hanging in there. I just as inherited as chairmanship of the uh, Capital Fire Mutual Aid Dispatch Committee, too, during their yeah. big study. So I'm apparently not I, very smart. I know, I know you're yeah. a busy person. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'll, I'll hang, I'll keep doing it. You don't it. mind. I don't mind doing it if you, if your time issue is just like, no, I don't mind doing it. It's like hitting yourself in the head with a hammer. It feels so good to stop. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So um, uh, I, I would like to, to welcome Chris. We, we already have at the beginning of the meeting, but um, Chris, I don't know if you have anything that you'd like to share with folks that are here. Um, pretty much we have our, Chuck is our road commissioner. Um, Brandy is a town treasurer. Diana is now the assistant town clerk. Um, and we have, uh, I know Gary Clark um, is here. He is um, our, our um, what do we call oh, town constable? Yep. Uh, if there's anything that any questions that you might have, Chris, or any comments you'd like to make, um, I'll give you the, the screen for the moment. 
All right. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm afraid I don't have any questions or comments at this particular moment. Okay. Um, I'm afraid that I'm just going to work on learning how to do this job well. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm going to be kind of in listening mode, but I'll, I'll jump in if you're, you all are willing to hear me out. If I have okay. questions, I might just jump in all right. at times. So thank you. Okay. Right. Does anybody have any questions or comments to Chris before we um, move on to the next agenda item? I'm good. Okay. All right. So um, town clerk's report. Yeah. I'm, I'm not sure which of our. Did you guys flip for it? <laughs> Anything to say, Robin? You want to update them on your. Well, I have um, started answering the phones here and taking some questions, sending out tax copies of tax bills for people's taxes, and just getting a feel of the whole office. Mm hmm. It's a lot to learn. I know that. Yes. Um, all right. Um, so um, how about, uh, I was hoping that we might just review uh, the town election results a little bit, if there are any questions or comments about that. I do, um, later on in the meeting, we'll be reviewing um, the elected and appointed officials. Um, there are openings in both um, for both elected and appointed officials that were, we'll kind of review what's filled, um, what needs to be filled and um, you know, what positions um, are open. So we could, we could kind of do that, um, the town election results in, in, the, um, in that review. Then. Sure. Okay. So um, one of the big things we need to discuss tonight is the, um, the uh, Article 5 ballot um, typo mistake um, that we need to um, kind of resolve or at least figure out what we're going to do to resolve it. Um, and I know Chance is here this evening as the president of the fire department to, to discuss that with us. Um, so just to bring people up to speed on that, um, see, I have a copy of the ballot. In Article 5, there was, I mean, I'm calling it a typo. I, I um, basically, um, I'll just read it. Uh, shall a town appropriate $105,296.89 to fund the operations of the Woodbury Fire Department, including the Capital Replacement Fund for this fiscal year commencing July 1, 2022. That would be fiscal year 23. Um, what will be happening um, on July 1st, 2021 is the beginning of fiscal year 22. Um, and we're presently in fiscal year um, 21. So this was an obvious mistake um, that we will need to um, correct. Um, we did get some uh, wording from our town lawyer, Paul Gillis, um, who pretty much stated that we would need to revisit this vote at a special town meeting. Um, and I'm kind of going with that um, as what should be done. Um, and, you know, we can schedule a special town meeting anytime. Um, there are, you know, criteria for warning it, et cetera. Um, but if that's the way we feel that we should go, then um, you know we can do that as as soon as um, all of the different um, criteria allow for that. And I don't have that in my head right at the moment. Um, I could quickly look that up and had sort of meant to do that before the meeting. But um, Diana may know warning requirements. Yeah, there are warning requirements, a certain number of days. Um, I, it might be actually 30 days. I'm not sure, but Diana, do you know? Diana's got her hand up. Pretty sure it's 40 days. Um, 40 days. And uh, yeah, there, uh, I'd uh, appreciate it if you could, I'm, I'm looking for other opinions. I've contacted the uh, um, Secretary of State's office and haven't heard back from them. 
Okay. Um, you know, the attorney's opinion is an opinion and Paul pretty much knows his stuff, but it's still an opinion. Yeah. Okay. And our, our elected officials, including Brandy and Skip, Lindsay both think it's a no brainer that, it, that they wouldn't they wouldn't hassle about it being paid based on that one number, especially because it was correctly listed in the actual warning and um, in the town report and 730 other people didn't notice it. I was foolish enough to point it out thinking that, you know, transparency and all that stuff. But, uh, uh -huh. Yeah, I was thinking that maybe we could get an opinion from uh, Vermont League of Cities and Towns also. <laughs> And just not let them know that we've already contacted our town lawyer because they usually defer to a yeah, town well, lawyer. I, I don't think, I mean, they're like, like the lawyers, they give the most conservative possible answer anyways. But I think the Secretary right. of State's office is at least in, you know, that's their specialty. Yeah. In the but, division. The VLCT does some of everything. Yeah. Um, so Chance, how do you feel about that? What are, what are your thoughts? Well, <clears throat> quite frankly, I'm not sure why my wording was changed to begin with. I submitted something completely different that didn't have a date on it. I can tell you that. I can uh, it, explain. It, it, I, I it, can it doesn't really matter. You changed one of our articles after it was accepted by the select board. The discussion really doesn't matter why. It does. The fact well, is it happened. I think let's, it does. let's give Diana a chance to explain. Oh, I thought you asked me to talk. Okay. Well. I asked to have an opportunity to explain. And the things that were changing so fast in January and February, the select the legislature came back in the middle of January and changed the law. And I had to hurry up and um, get everything changed from what we had already planned, even though we already had the uh, we already had the uh, warning issues. And yes, you're right, there, there were no dates there, but what I did and what I do every year is I take last year's warning and write it over and that sometimes leads to problems. So yeah, it was my fault, but it was, the excuse was that uh, there was too much going on. And that was one little thing out of many, 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 many things that go into putting the town report together and putting together an Australian ballot warning for the first time. Well, and I can appreciate that. And that's why I said it really doesn't matter why. I don't want to get into an argument over that. Um, my issue is it was worn properly, but on the ballot wrong, which means at some point in time, somebody will argue that this is an illegal item. You think? Uh, I'm pretty I'm pretty sure because we were told the last time we looked at building a building people were going to uh, if we'd won we were going to have to deal with an argument about it being legal. I don't see we, sh we can take any chances with this because if we have to wait 30 days, wait for somebody to decide if they're going to do this, then have to wait 40 days, we're getting awfully close to the start of our budget and without an approved budget, we have no operating funds. Okay, I think we can't afford to wait. All right. Mm -hmm. So, so it sounds like we should we should warn a, a special town meeting um, as soon as possible. Um, and of course, we have until the end of the fiscal year. Um, we have till till July first to have to get this thing um, resolved. Um, so, um, my feeling is is that we'll look into um, you know how long it takes by state statute, you know, how long we have to warn for. Um, and, and then, you know, we'll have to figure out how we're going to have this special town meeting. Um, do we want to try to have it be, you know, a, a vote or, yes, Diana, what are your the, thoughts? I, I checked with the, uh, back in January, another thing that you had to do was to, uh, vote on whether or not to have this Australian ballots. And the way that the motion was made and adopted was to adopt all budget articles by Australian ballot. So the idea of having a, a Zoom meeting, like somebody had suggested that it's gonna have to be by a ballot. 
I don't know okay. how we're going to warn people. I have no idea how we can get the word out with no, no newspaper. I don't think we want the expense of sending everybody a postcard again. That was $500. And yeah. So I, we could just go with the old fashioned way of posting things. Yeah, I mean, we'll just use the website, Front Porch Forum. Um, maybe we could use um, the, the uh, social media thing that Gary Clark oversees. A lot of people see that. Um, we could put it in the Gazette, um, post it up around. Um, yeah, just do whatever we can. And then uh, how, how would people, would we create a new ballot um, or would we... There would have to be a ballot and there would be an opportunity for people to request an absentee ballot. We could do it like we used to do with the, uh, the Hazen votes, the people would come in here. Okay. If you don't do an absentee ballot, they could come in here, I guess. Okay. Or, or that seems to make the most sense with the least amount of disruption. Yeah. We got the, we, well, depending on how restricted we are in another couple of months we might have to do it at the town uh, hall so we can all stay six feet apart yeah well whatever whatever is required i guess so so um i guess what we'll do is um look at the look at the rules for a, a special town meeting um and then get a warning out as soon as possible um and get the process started Let's say if it was 40 days and let's say by the beginning of next week, the warning was ready to go um, and be, be posted, that would bring us into um, middle of April, late April, that, um, that we would have the vote. Um, that'll give us a couple months before the fiscal year ends. So um, seems like- I'm not finding it easy but where it says how long you got to yeah, I, ha I have it in a file on paper. Okay. Um, I've been searching here, but it mostly gets into reconsideration votes, which are within six, must be done within 60 days. It doesn't say my yeah. number of the sticks in my head is 30 days, but I doesn't make it right. Yeah, that, that was the time frame in my in my memory, too. But um, but I, I can pretty easily find that I have to dig into my file box and pull it out. OK, so. Um, that's what we'll do. Um, Chance, do you want to send the particular, should we just use the, the previous warning and make sure that the date is correct? Is that okay? Just use what is there in Article 5, but change it to July 1, 2021? I was going to say, I, I, I would remove the word commencement for starters. Okay. And just write for the year beginning July 1st, 2021 through June 30th. 2022. If, if you have to put dates in, be very clear and spell it out. Okay. So basically, um, what we could say is for fiscal year 2022, uh, beginning um, July 1st, 2021, and ending June 30th, or is there 31 days in June? 30. 30. 30. 30 June 30th, um, 2022. That's fine. Sounds good. Okay. Uh, so let's fiscal year <clears throat> July 1, 2021, June 30th, 2022. Okay. It should be. Um, and then, Diana, how much time would it take? Obviously, we should be able to have a ballot made up in the, in the, uh, during the warning time. I don't know if she heard me or not. Yeah, I did. Yeah. You did? Okay. First day, you know, looking at a calendar here, it says the, as far as town meeting goes, the first day a clerk may post warnings 40 days prior to the election. And I think the last day the warning may be posted is 30 days before the election. So it would be 30 days. Um, I mean, warning That's the number that's stuck in my head. Website. Yeah. So if it were posted by, um, let's say, uh, March 15th, then um, 30 days would be uh, close to that in April, middle of April, basically. 
Robin, you up for that? Okay. Robin's gonna have to get her really high boots on for this stuff. <laughs> Michael, where are those beaver boots? <laughs> oh, hey, hey, I got I got waiters that go up to here. There's some waiters there. Yeah. <laughs> Better buy a boat. Yeah. Yeah. Can I use the fire department's air boat? <laughs> sure. Come on over. <laughs> okay. Anything else on that that issue, Chance? Anything else to? No, I was just going to add. You know, once you guys get it all ready to go, we can post it on our site as well. So okay, we that makes perfect sense. Posting out there for everybody. Yep. Just let me know okay. what you got. Mm -hmm. Thanks, everyone. Yeah, thanks. So yeah. This, this will be a, a regular just check off paper ballot. We won't have to use the tabulator, will we? I I don't I don't think so. I mean, we could, I suppose. Um, no, it, it costs six hundred dollars. Oh we yeah, no. No, we don't want to do that. I was thinking. Fortunately, they paid for that, but they're not going to pay for it anymore. Yeah, it's only going to be the one thing there, too. I guess right. too. Yeah, I'll volunteer to count votes at the end of the day. <laughs> oh, Chris has a question. Well, no, it'll be yeah. two, right? There, there are two things. You got to rescind the previous vote, and, right. and so then, we'll have to put some information out because it'll be a little confusing. Right. Okay. Yeah. Because good, good comment. You know, Technically, we have a budget approved for beginning July first, twenty twenty two. Right. So we should have two two yeah. articles on the. Yeah, that's what the attorney said. Okay. I, yep. Yeah. All right. I, I have my I have my new uh, my, my new town select board book out in front. Ah, <laughs> there, there is. It does have special town it, meetings in there. It does have special meetings in there, but we would have to rescind. Before yeah, okay. we vote. So we have to have, there have to be two, two things. Yeah, there's two articles. The first one would be to rescind the previous and the second right. would be the new article. Right. And people are going to get confused. Yeah, that's too bad. <laughs> Either that or we'll step ahead for next year's town meeting. You won't have to put one in there. Well, truly, you could leave the old one. It means we have <laughs> next true. year's budget already. <laughs> that, that would actually be an illegal article. Because we, yeah. we can't commit the town <laughs> to, to future... Right. Okay. <laughs> right. Do that. <laughs> well, we won't do that. <laughs> All right. Okay, good. Well, I'm glad that got mentioned because that was anything else concerning this. No, we're good. Okay. Um, anything else for um, our our town clerks? At all, any questions? Any any other um, news from the town office from the town clerks? I'm just trying like crazy to get things clean and throw out stuff that I should have thrown out over the last ten years. Oh yeah, you could accumulate um, a lot of stuff, I bet. So yeah, and uh, sharing with Robin the things that uh, could be helpful to her as far as reading over some history. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's going to be a few weeks before I can get out of here very much. Mm -hmm. Now, this other thing will take another few weeks, so. Yeah. Oh, well. Yeah, well. I don't expect to leave uh, Robin high and dry. Uh, well, I'll know you've completed your task when I walk into the town office and, um, Robin is sitting at your desk and you're sitting at hers. Right. <laughs> and we're advertising for a new assistant town clerk at that point. <laughs> right, yeah. yeah. Okay, anything else for the town clerk? Okay, sounds, sounds like we can move on. Um, it's nice to have a town treasurer with us again. We've missed you. Um, do you have anything to report? I do. Okay. Right forward here. So over the last two weeks, um, we ended up receiving um, our conservation grant in the amount of $11,866.93. Um, we also received for income um, a library grant that was for to boost their internet for fifteen hundred dollars. Um, also in cash receipts, um, there was fleet permits that have been, been taken in, recording and some copies. Um, 
So last week I did a transfer of 10,000 um, to cover bills and to cover payroll. I didn't do a transfer today. It wasn't necessary. Um, other items. So I had left a, along with your financial statements at the office with the, the warrants. Um, a kind of disappointing letter from VLCT where I tried applying for um, a $5,000 grant to help out with um, the new piece of equipment for the highway. Yeah, the passive. Yeah. Uh, and it was, it was rejected. Um, so I, I made a copy and just and left it for everybody. I was really hoping to get that grant. Mm -hmm. um, but unfortunately. Thank you for um, trying. Other, yeah, thank you for trying. It was worth one. It was worth the try. Yep. Yeah. I, yeah. It was. Yeah. Um, other things. Uh, delinquencies in the last two weeks. Um, Took in a thousand dollars, even. Um, other things. Um, I went. I had back surgery, and I'm getting better. Um, sitting down is not really an option right now. You're not jogging. You're not out jogging yet. <laughs> Baby steps, but I feel a lot better than what I what I did for six weeks. So that's good news. Um, other things, just busy. I have to, um, for payroll, I have to plug in, change everybody's title as far as Robin being the clerk and um, putting Diana to the assistant, um, pay, uh, whether it's going to be an executive session, um, and then um, benefits. So I have, um, the back side of, of what I do, I have to get that plugged into payroll. Um, and then um, I got to meet Chris today, which was great. And um, I have to get some forms filled out from him. So there's just um, little things that I need to, to, um, to get caught up on with a new change of, from town meeting. Mm -hmm. And, and as far as the, um, you know, the pay for the town clerk and the um, assistant town clerk, as elected officials, we should probably have an executive session and discuss that. Yeah. But basically, um, Robin, you are an elected official, so the select board really doesn't have any control. I mean, control. So we control the funds, so I guess we got to discuss the pay. So it would be a discussion and um, um, you basically get to name your price and you also set the rate Sweet. for your assistant. Yeah. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> so. Um, I'll have fun with that uh, special town meeting, Robin. <laughs> so, but yeah. Uh, can you know, I remind so, you that, can I remind you that, uh, although is there going to be an you're breaking up, Diana. Is there going to be an executive session to talk about pay? It would have to be next Not time. To we warn it. Not tonight. At our next meeting. Okay. Well, in anyway, in any case, I'll remind you that back in a few months ago, when it became obvious that no one else was going to apply for the clerk job, and and Robin and I came up with a workable situation where she would be become the executive or the assistant clerk for a while and then we would switch positions it was my suggestion at the time that we both uh make i would go down to 20 dollars an hour from 25 something that i've gotten up to over 10 years and uh she would go up to 20 dollars an hour which is about what is on the uh on the pay chart for a first year town clerk okay. so well, well, my, my view of it, Michael, is if they're happy discussing it in an open meeting and they're happy with what she just described, that's fine with me. Uh-huh. Yeah, I, I'm fine so with that. If we're all in agreement, that could save the, the extra time next time. Yep. Well, we might still want to give Robin an opportunity to... Well, she can just shake her head yes or no or say yes or no to what we just discussed, right? And and we 
we could, you know, Robin, if you want to think about it for a bit, yeah. um, there's no reason we couldn't do this in open nope. meeting, I don't think. Um, so, you know, we don't have to make a decision tonight if you want to think about it a little bit and we could um, have it on the agenda for next um, time. That's, that's fine too. I can see her thinking right now. <laughs> It looked that painful, Michael. <laughs> uh, no, but I just could could tell that the wheels were turning there. Yeah. <laughs> think about it. Yeah. I will think about it. Think Let's about just it. Let's schedule it for two weeks. Yep. Okay. And we'll do it in open meeting. I don't think we really need to do it in an executive session, um, unless you would feel more comfortable that way, Robin. Well. If, don't know. Okay, we'll think let's about just that schedule. Let's schedule a, a employee executive session. I think it's probably the proper way to do it. Okay. All right. For next next meeting. I would agree with I would agree with Paul that I think that that's a, that kind of discussion is best yeah. in an executive session. Okay. Yeah. The only reason I mentioned otherwise was the uh, if they were both in agreement right now, it's, then we do it. But I wanted I don't want to put pressure on anybody. So. Yeah, I I feel I feel like giving some 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 time to have to, to have that. Yeah, and especially have it in sort of a more intimate setting. I think that that's Agreed. a more appropriate way to have okay. that conversation. Agreed. See you at the next meeting. Yeah. <laughs> um, anything else for our town treasurer? So, um, Brandy, Brandy, I do want to mention that um, when you're feeling um, better and more able, um, there are a couple of uh, parts of the personnel policy that we've been working on um, that I would like to go over with you to so that we can kind of finalize that that document. It's partly we've kind of revamped the pay scale and um, and are wondering if that could be put into a uh, um, like an Excel spreadsheet that if there when there are changes made like for a cost of living increase each year that it would automatically change everything in the pay scale if there's some way we could set that up. And, and then I just wanna go over the insurance part of the um, personnel policy with you to in case there are any changes. But, okay, so maybe, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Oh, so this yes. week I will, be, I will be there nine to one all week. Um, okay. Yeah, I'm just not in a really good mood past noon. <laughs> all right, well, I don't wanna catch you I in a bad mood, the, that's for sure. Um, why don't we, uh, maybe but, uh, let's think about yeah. um, next week, maybe, maybe on Tuesday of next week. That's an open day for me and I could get down okay. there early before you get to your um, meltdown point. Like and... <laughs> okay. So. Sounds good. All right. Okay. Uh, so, um, can I say something now? Yes. Um, about executive session. <laughs> If we're going to start thinking about having a third person, I was thinking that we needed to have an executive session on that too. And we can do that the same night and start having that. Yeah. That's what I was hoping. Okay. Is it something that should be discussed in an in executive session or could it be in an open meeting? Uh, uh, why don't you, why don't you email me um, what you what you want to discuss and um, and, I can tell uh, you better I, after I talk to some of the guys tomorrow. Okay. Yeah. So my, my thought on that, Michael, is just that uh, I, I think people might speak more freely. One of the options is it puts us at a disadvantage when when we go out to advertise or do whatever for this position. I think it's nice that uh, Chuck or any of us would want to be able to speak freely without that getting um, uh, put out in the public prematurely. Okay. And I want to make sure that everybody's on the exact same page, too. You know, because the, the results will have to be, but the, you know, the kind of the, how we get there, I just don't want anyone to be careful of what they say, right. just because they don't want it out too soon. Well, and we've also got existing employees. If it affected any of them, it really wouldn't be a fa fair to them okay. if comments were made that they would seem to be detrimental to their employment potentially. Right. Not it saying does that sound like it would be appropriate to do it yeah. in an executive session. Then. Yeah. Okay. All right. I think it should be. Okay. Okay. Um, I'm sorry. Can I ask you? Can I ask you a quick question of everybody? Yes. I apologize for interrupting. No, no, but, uh, no apologies. Now that we're going, 
to, to hypothetically to three full-time. That means that we have no chance of adding any part-time employees whatsoever if we're going to three full-time. Is that correct? That's the thinking that we would eliminate the two part-time positions. Yeah, I mean, we could do anything we want. We just haven't budgeted for any of that. So, I mean, again, anything is possible, I guess, in my mind. Mm -hmm. But essentially, right. the, the, the thinking that you all had before I ever showed up here was that we're combining basically two part-time positions into a single full-time job. Correct. Okay. I'm sorry. I just needed a clarification. Nope, no, that's fair. You weren't here for the conversation, so yeah. I get it. And, you know, it, it may be going forward that, um, you know, like in the winter time, we may want to have sort of, I'll call it a per diem road crew member in case, uh, you know, a another person is needed um, beyond the three or if one of the three is not able to, like a substitute, I guess we would call it instead, but. Um, which we've had in the past. Which we've had in Let's the past, yeah. yeah. I guess Let's you, bring you, that in up right off quick. You know, uh, you, you're gonna have three full-time people yeah. and you don't have that much equipment. And right. if one of them's out, the other two should be able to handle most anything. Okay, and all right. I don't want them to get the idea that all they got to do is whine a little bit and they're going to get some help. <laughs> because this is going to be a pretty good deal for the three of them. Yeah. Okay. So again, it's a good conversation we will have. And, uh... Right. Right. Okay. Thanks. Um, Chuck, do you have anything? It looks like we're kind of in the town highway report now. Do you have anything else that you'd like to share? Um, yeah. A couple of things, some good, some bad. Okay. Uh, I'll give you the good first. The, the new mowers here, the loader is finished being equipped for it today. Mm -hmm. uh, it should be on and functioning tomorrow as a trial. Oh. And so we should be all set as far as when it comes time to start mowing roadsides. Mm -hmm. And, mm -hmm. um, the bad news is they started to grade her this morning and got ready to push banks back before she could have the dough and she head gasket opened up and put all the antifreeze in the oil. Perfect. Oh. So it's my opinion and Greg, well, Greg and I have both have the same opinion. We talked about it. It really needs to go to Jordan Milton. Uh, it's not like we can leave a truck outside now. The sand will freeze. It'll be all froze up when they get ready to use it. Mm -hmm. Greater needs to be fixed because mud season is just around. The yeah, it, Wednesday, it'll be here Wednesday. Right. Yeah. So no, I, I agree with you, Chuck. I think if that's the best way is get that sent out as quick as possible and get the motor fixed. Okay. Well, there, I asked them to take the wing off it today. I believe the wing's all off it. Yeah. And with it by midweek, it'll be on its way. Okay. Okay. Well, Will Jordan Milton come and, and transport it or? No, how are they well, gonna... yeah. we've got a private trucker that'll transport okay. it. He's in short right. and everything. Okay. He moves skitters and excavators and everything all the time. Will okay. it run enough to get it on a trailer? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. But, I mean, we can't run it too long. We'll, we're going to take crankshaft out. Take, yeah, I'll take you out. Yeah. 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 And it's too bad, too, because we need to push those banks back. <laughs> Yeah, well. Oh, well. well. Maybe this warm weather will melt them back a bit. But I was going to say, I it's yeah, as long as it'll melt it and run off the road instead of in road, we'll be all yeah, set. You don't, the, get that, don't get that edge pushed back. It'll, the water will run right down the road. Yeah. yeah. But it is what it is. We can't fix it now. It's broke. Yeah, yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, and, it, you know, it's, the town isn't that big. If there's a problem, a few problem areas, they can run their loader over and yep. cut the edge of the road off, yep. you know, the, the, the ridge on the edge of the road to get the water off. Okay. So I'm not, I'm not, I'm concerned about it, but not real concerned about the roads. Uh, mm -hmm. I am concerned about having a grader ready to go for mud season and shortly after mud season. Correct. Yeah. So uh, I'm, I called Jordan Milton today. They're expecting it. So I'm thinking, Hopefully next week they'll, by the end of next week, it'll be pretty well done. Okay. Did that compressor ever get fixed? Did, or is that something we got to have them do too? I have them look at it while it's there. Yeah, I would. Okay. Yeah. yeah. 
Doc? Yes. Could you again, this is just for the minutes, could you tell me again the head gasket, something, what happened? <laughs> the head gasket, it, the engine blew a head gasket and all the antifreeze, the coolant uh, emptied into the oil pan. So it makes the oil and the antifreeze together. Creamy. Oh. Looks like a milkshake. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Anything else, Chuck? Um, no, I don't think so. Okay. Uh, they've I got Ronnie cleaning up under the high drive. Now, I guess the low pro won't go under it because of the buildup. Um, mm -hmm. I'm not sure why the loader hasn't been up there and cut the buildup off yet, but I'll get into that tomorrow too. Yeah, it could be could be kind of frozen for the loader to get it. Well, could be, but yeah. loader do quite a lot if you use it right. Right. Okay. Yeah. Um, I just hate to. I mean, I don't mind Ronnie doing stuff. He does a good job and stuff like that, but. If a town crew can handle it, I really think they should be doing it. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Yeah. yeah. Other than um, that, no, I guess not. I've had a couple of comments from people I've talked to in town that they feel they're <laughs> and they're happy with them. And the only one I've had a problem with is oh, one of the silt. Kelsey, Kelsey silt. Yeah, that's a perennial problem. Um, I. He needs to get better tires, I think. Yeah, I'm not sure yeah. what the situation, but that's been, we've heard from uh, from him for years. For years. Yeah, every, yeah. Well. Many outside, times yeah. in the course of one winter, yeah. Outside of town buying him tires, I doubt he's gonna buy any. <laughs> yeah, well, he should. <laughs> and I'm really gonna holler a lot if the town starts buying him tires. Right, <laughs> we, we won't do that, but yeah. yeah. <laughs> But I had I a question for, oh, go ahead, Mike. Go ahead, Paul. Okay, uh, remember our discussion a while back that the quarry's up crushing granite, that we were gonna get a certain amount of granite. Do you remember how much that was? I don't, but uh, Greg and I were talking about it today and I'm gonna try to get a hold of somebody tomorrow. So they're up there doing it, or haven't, they, I, I went, look, um, I got a call from somebody that suggested that we would ask if maybe they, would crush us up another five or 10,000 yards because it might be the cheapest we ever get that stuff. I, as I recall to begin with, it was gonna be 10,000 to start with. Okay. So, but I will. You see what the idea is, maybe if Swenson's gonna give us some material, uh, McDonald is up there right now crushing, we could pay the crushing fee if we won't get uh, better material uh, no. for any mess money because it's gonna be just the cost of the crushing and. The trucking is two miles instead of 25 or 30. Exactly. Yeah. The The deal will be that we have to load it ourselves, but the loader will set up there instead of sure. setting it down. There ain't no difference. Where yeah. So you? that's something you can, you or uh, Greg can check on it because, you know, it might be five or $10,000. I don't know to get that, but it might be worth paying for that. Well, it's kind of a one time opportunity. 10,000 would be real cheap. Yeah. So, um, yeah. But it's still in the works. Um, Greg and I were talking about it today. Somebody has changed jobs up there, and I don't. I have to look at my notes, see who it was. He's no longer there. The guy that I was talking to was not. So there's another okay. guy that Greg seems to know, and he was okay. going to give me his name today. So when I call in tomorrow, I'll get it and we'll get started on it. Yeah, because that's what we're supposed to get. And then if we could, it, what they would charge us or would they even do considering doing another five or 10,000 yards if we paid for the crushing? Right. I think it'd be worth looking into. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And Chuck, I, I have some contact names for the quarry too, and, and they, may, they may be outdated now. They're from, I think that the most recent names are from about a year ago, but I can- Yeah, that's about my most current names. Yeah, yeah I, could, um, I could send those to you, but it sounds like- yeah. Why don't Great. you send it to me just just in case? Okay. So I got some, right. some backup. Okay. Yeah. If you so, get the extra, where will you store it? Well, hopefully we'd leave it right up there. Oh. Uh, you can make us yeah. a nice pile. Yeah. That would be the best way to take it. There's right a there. big. There's a really big pile. If you drive up, the new roads cut in, and there's a gate there, and there's a huge pile in yeah. there. I don't know if that's ours or theirs, but 
I think that's theirs because they've got to put a box culvert in across that little wetland. Okay. Right. That's yeah. Their, that's their stuff. So again, we're kind of saying, hey, would you give us the granite and would you let us store it up there? And then McDonald's kind of, how much would you charge us to, to exactly. uh, crush it? Yeah. But they've always been pretty good neighbors. So. Right. Right. Yeah. Um, like I say, Greg and I were talking about it today and, and uh, I'll get some uh, number telephone numbers tomorrow and get back at it. Perfect. So I have one other um, town highway thing um, to report. Um, I'll be meeting with um, Shauna Clifford, the district seven manager and Logan Perry next Tuesday um, from eight to nine AM. It's a, it's an annual meeting that usually happens after town meeting um, and we review the, uh, the budget that was approved. Um, and that basically, you know, from the budget, it pretty much determines what VTRANS um, will be giving the town for towards its class two and class three roads. Um, and then I have a list of, of things to talk with Shauna about. Um, Chuck, you're welcome to be a part of that. Uh, select board members are welcome to be a part of that too, if you wish. Um, I this think is we could, It's a Zoom meet. Yeah, it, uh, yeah. I, it's similar to a Zoom meeting. They use a different yeah. format, but it's basically the same thing. Yeah, if you just send me the link, I'll jump in if I can. Okay, all right. Yeah, I, would do the, I, would do the, I would do the same, Michael. This is okay, Chris. all right. I would do the same if yeah. I could. And I would definitely be there. If, okay, if yeah, it would be good. Um, I, what I would like to do is ask uh, Shauna about um, a grant for the design work for the box culvert to replace the rotting metal culvert uh, at the bottom of Valley Lake Road. We, yeah. we talked about that a little bit last year um, when she was here. And, and of course the state with the pandemic basically froze any kind of funding for anything like that. Right. Um, so, and I would imagine that this year there is some money available. So um, that would be our first step in, in, in uh, replacing that culvert. Um, and then I wanted to talk to her about our, our plans to uh, um, divert uh, part of Valley Lake Road, that bad corner on the hill. Um, yes. Yeah. Other, other things like that. Um, uh, one thing I'd like to bring up at that meeting is uh, the apron at the foot of East Hill. Okay. They, they tell me that uh, the state of Vermont is liable for that or responsible for that up 100 feet. Okay. And that apron is completely gone and we cannot keep a decent entrance to East Hill there without it. Yeah, I, I noticed that. That would be that would be an opportunity to talk to Sean up okay. then about that. Um, but So we'll make a list. Okay. And uh, um, okay. And uh, uh, I'm sorry, just jump in for a second. Um, yeah. So Chuck, I have a pretty good relationship with Kevin Spaulding, who's the director of manufacturing for Swenson, because yeah. we work we work together pretty directly on drilling projects sure. that are not related to this. So uh, if you send, if if I can get your contact information, I'll get you all the stuff that I have for 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 Kevin. And okay. that'd be, be a great place to start because I think he can probably reach out fairly easily to make sure that, that we can facilitate. Yeah, I think it can make a big difference still. Okay. Maybe even if you had a chance, you'd kick him the shin over it. Yep. Can do. <laughs> can do. Yeah. Um, I will. Michael has my uh, information in a way. Yeah, right. I, I could send you Chuck's email address. Um, That'd be great. And I, I, if you do that, I would, I would, I would sort, of, I would reach out to Kevin, and then I would make sure that Chuck is part of that conversation. Okay, I'll send that cool. either this evening or first thing tomorrow morning. Sounds good. Thank you. Okay. And that, that as long as we're talking about con contacts, that yellow sheet with all our stuff on it is that who updates that? The assistant clerk. Okay, so we probably because I was going to say we probably should update it. <laughs> Oh, I don't even know where it is. It's on my wall here. It's orange. I got one right up here. <laughs> okay. Okay. Thank you very you much for doing it, Chris. I appreciate it. Yeah. No problem. Anything else under the town highway report? 
All right. So um, next on the agenda is the Woodbury Village Stormwater Project. Um, and we'll be um, meeting with Grace Vinson, who is part of the Central Vermont Regional Planning Commission, and Chris Rivett, who is a civil engineer at Du Bois and King. We've had one public forum over this project um, with where we invited abutting landowners and anyone interested. Um, I know that um, Chuck and Paul were at the last um, informational meeting. This is another required informational meeting before the select board. Um, mm -hmm. And I know Robin is, is kind of an abutting landowner and she wasn't able to be at the last meeting and, and this will be good for Chris to take in. Um, so, and I'll basically just give a quick overview. Um, these are, uh, there were four sites designated as a priority, priority sites from a survey that was done four years ago now, I think, for different erosion um, issues uh, in, the, in the town. Um, there were 50 sites that were uh, looked at and, um, and then the town and had the um, opportunity to, to choose the priority sites. And four of the sites that were uh, originally part of the survey were uh, right in the village. Um, and with all of our flooding erosion issues in the village, they, they, they became the priority. Um, so one is associated with the uh, runoff from Valley Lake Road and the school parking lot. That's one of the design sites that we'll be um, looking at tonight. And then, uh, you know, there was the issue, um, ongoing issue with the flooding in the annex building. And then of course the the flooding in the annex building uh, continuing um, to the Kingsbury branch uh, right next door. So that site was was also um, a priority site and that's the other uh, design that we'll be looking at uh, this evening. There are two other sites in the village. One is between the uh, fire station um, and the post office. Um, and the other is uh, kind of related to the runoff from Church Street and the Cabot Road. Mm -hmm. um, those are two other sites that will be that we weren't able to finish the testing on um, this past fall. So that those projects will continue, and uh, we'll be we'll be looking at um, designs for those. <laughs> so the designs that we're looking at tonight are sixty percent designs um, and then based on our input and um, from this previous meeting and this meeting, um, Chris will um, continue um, and eventually will be presented with 100% designs. And then of course the, the goal, the purpose for these designs are to have um, the designs finished um, and then they are tools to use in applying for grant money to actually implement um, and put these uh, infiltration basins um, in place in the village. So, and Grace, if you have anything else that I've forgotten that you'd like to add, uh, feel free to add. No, that was great. Thank you. Um, and thanks for making the time. Yeah, so I am just gonna hand it over to Chris to talk about the designs. Okay, and Chris, um, if you would like to screen share, we can make you a co-host. Okay, uh, I'm actually on my phone. Let me just quickly join with my computer. I was wondering, okay. and so I will uh, quickly get into this meeting from my computer so that I can share my screen. Okay. Uh, Let's see. Um... I figured I'd at least try and show my face this time, Michael, since my uh -huh. actual, since my laptop doesn't have a <laughs> video capability. All right. So, Chris, you are you are a coast host co-host. Thank you, Leaf. I was looking to find how to do it here, but I know you already are. So. All right, let's see if I can share my screen. Uh, everybody see my screen? 
Yes. Yes. Yeah. Got it. Actually, I'm seeing. I'm seeing something else. So. Right now, we've got an, your emails. Okay. Right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. There. Oh. All right. Now we're there. <laughs> Let's see. How do we get rid of this? Um, there we go. Can everybody hear me now? Yes. Okay. Yeah. I as I was, I was getting feedback between the two devices, and uh, so I was just trying to get through that really quick. All right, so I will start at the uh, elementary school site. Uh, as Michael mentioned, it's going to the project here is looking to treat uh, stormwater uh, and and capture stormwater um, at the from the upper side of Valley Lake Road across the street at the elementary school as well as uh, the parking lot for the elementary school. Um, the big concerns for this was obviously flooding but also uh, sediment and phosphorus. Uh, the Kingsbury branch ultimately ends up uh, in the Winooski River which ends up in Lake Champlain. So those were the two items that we were really looking at in terms of stormwater treatment for this. But as we design these, we were, we were also considering uh, the larger storm events uh, in order to attenuate some water before it reaches the King, Kingsbury branch. Uh, so at the school here, what we proposed, the proposal that was provided in the study that Michael mentioned was a subsurface gravel wetland, which is an above ground practice. It was something that may have been, you know, may, may have been used as a visual uh, tool to educate um, some of the elementary school students or other students in town or even the townsfolks um, about stormwater and how some of the practices work. Uh, as we got into some of the um, investigation work on the site, we actually determined that we were able to propose a subsurface practice one in the end, once it's all constructed and vegetation has regrown, um, it should actually not change the landscape all that much. It will be generally hidden with some uh, minor, minor features. Um, so here, this is actually the existing conditions plan. We're looking at this area here around this test pit, just to the north side of the tennis courts. Um, as we go through this project, uh, the town highway crew did some work recently um, to reroute the water coming from the culvert across Lake Valley Road. It used to come, it used to run down through the parking lot and out to the Kings Ranch by the uh, fire annex. Now it, they put in a new swale, which basically redirects water flow to the south. Um, and so we're, we're trying to take advantage of that as part of this, where right in the swale, we'll install a catch basin. Um, basically, that catch basin will capture any water that um, is coming through that swale. That's the idea. It'll be set right at the base of the swale. We'll capture water uh, and we'll convey it to this system here. Um, it looks like it takes up a lot of room, but ultimately completely underground. And what these infiltrate, what these systems are, is they're a series of boxes. Um, they're from identity polyethylene, and what they really do is they create void space underneath the ground surface in order to allow water to, to pond in the area. Um, so this is the area we've proposed to use. Uh, it will capture and be able to attenuate flows from the up to the one year storm event. So the one year storm event they consider 
um, to be a very frequent storm happens, you know, the, the chances of it happening are essentially one every one year um, or the uh, pretty much 100%, if you will. Um, we also look at storms up to what they call the 100 year storm, which is essentially the 1% storm. It's the 1% chance uh, of that year. And those storms are the storms that end up being five inches of rain at a time. Uh, the one year storms are more like one, one and a half inches or so. Um, but there is uh, contingencies for the for the 100 year storm built this with uh, these overflow pipes here, which will be directed to a swale. Uh, in talking with Chuck, the town wants to reconstitute an old an old swale that's sitting by the ball field. So that will be part of the project. Um, from the from a profile view of this, uh, let's say you take a section and cut it right through. Um, basically that will, this is what it'll look like. So water will flow into this catch basin here, um, sediment uh, and any, yeah, any sediment that comes with it will get caught in this bottom area here, the sump. Um, we're proposing a four foot sump for that to, to give us a, a large enough range for uh, the highway to crew to give them a little bit of time in between when they have to clean it. Uh, ideally that, you know, 50% volume. Um, I, we're not sure what the, um, how often that'll be, but that'll be the idea. And, and for the most part, set should, should sit in there. Some of those larger storms may wash some into the into this culvert pipe, but uh, they should be able to get to that. Um, so from there, water flows here, flow, flows through this 12-inch HDPE pipe and into these boxes here, which is where the water will build up before it infiltrates into the ground. So it will sit there and it will infiltrate the ground um, as the storm is ongoing. If it reaches a certain point, it will outflow. Uh, we've set the, the overflows right on top of the, uh, our tanks. Um, in looking at this, I need to bring up my report here. The, the treatment, um, parameters that we used, I, I mentioned were sediment and phosphorus. Uh, these, this system as, as designed, we anticipate would account for almost 100% of phosphorus that's uh, in the runoff, in stormwater runoff, and uh, should be 100% of the sediment as well. And, and that's due to the fact that it will infiltrate. So um, sediment won't run out into the field or into, you know, out into the brook um, it, during larger storms, even the, even the storms that are, it's designed for, to say the one year storm. Um, in doing the calculations here, we, we estimate that it'll, this uh, system at the school will remove about two pounds of phosphorus per year, per, per year. Uh, and about uh, it, it, the range, I think this is probably the upper end of the range using uh, some of the estimates that I did, but about pounds of sediment that could potentially come from the area that run, runs off uh, under Lake Valley Road and from the elementary school. So that's, that's pretty significant. Um, to give you a, to give you sort of a visual of what those tanks look like for those of you ha who have seen them yet, um, like I said, they're just these squares, square boxes that will just provide space for water to to build up in. Um, and so far, that's pretty pretty much what I have for that for that site. Um, I, I have one question. Um, 
So for the for the um, infiltration basin, what what are roughly the dimensions of that? How much, you know, like hundred feet by so many feet, or so this one from very tip by the catch basin here to the end, I believe that is about seventy. Actually, I can look at the profile. I think it's about seventy-five feet. Okay. By thirty-five at the widest. I think I think that's thirty-five mm -hmm. at the widest here. The widest. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That bottom portion. So if I look at my stations here. And how deep? How deep in the ground will that be? Uh, this one would be about four feet, I believe. Four feet. Yeah. So maybe maybe five and a half or six. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right to the very bottom here. Mm -hmm. So with these uh, with the uh, infiltration basin device device, does water that goes in there does that mm -hmm. infiltrate into the ground around it? It, directly underneath it, yes. Directly underneath it, okay. Yeah, and so we, we found that uh, the soils underneath, uh, when we went out there with the road crew uh, and did some, they took some, dug some test pits for us and we, we looked at the soils. Uh, we did some infiltration testing uh, thereafter uh, and we found that on average, you'll probably get about six inches an hour of water so of six inches up in that uh in those r tanks there it will likely uh, infiltrate into the ground within an hour mm -hmm. so it's pretty it's pretty fast in this area um you know some we can we can look at anything as low as half an inch an hour 0. 0.2 inches an hour mm -hmm. um these are these are pretty pretty quick if, you, if you're looking at the, the slower infiltration rates, then you're looking at much bigger um, tank sizes. Yep. Get, and you need and, and will, will, will that affect the ground around it at all? Or will it be pretty much on, you know, will the ground get kind of soft and soggy or it should uh, be? Sorry, um, based on what we were seeing out there, the, the soils are very sandy. Mm -hmm. uh, so that so water should move through it relatively easily mm -hmm. until, until it hits bedrock and that will, will travel um, by the bedrock out. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's pretty much what happens now. Obviously we're directing a little bit more to it, but we don't anticipate that um, there'll be any issues with those soils. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that gravel runs all the way through from where you're gonna put this pit, runs all the way out through across that field beside that pond out through there. I mean. Mm -hmm. it, there was a gravel pit in there that most of the roads of Woodbury are built out of. Oh, uh, no kidding. Huh. Yeah, I don't believe you'll have any problem with, mm -hmm. uh, with drainage air. Mm -hmm. Great. <clears throat> yeah, so there's a, so there's a, there's a fault system that runs right through there. And so that's actually one of the deepest parts of the valley. And so that part of the Dog River fault zone actually runs right through that middle section. So the reason that we have you know, that big sandy pile in there is because it's basically filling a, an old, basically an old fault system, a basin. So it's deep, goes quite deep through that section. So uh, there should be good percolation throughout that entire, that entire sweep. And in, in case folks didn't know, Chris is a geologist, so uh, <laughs> he, he knows his subject. Hey, uh, Chris, I did have a question just yeah. uh, based on the, on your modular design, none of those are going to be serviceable. Is that true? Uh, yes, to an extent, um, this 12 inch pipe, uh, will extend all the way into it, right. uh, the, that will have a, a, a grid around it so that any sediment, uh, will basically stop at the edge and probably clog that 12 inch pipe first before it gets into there. So they shouldn't theoretically need to okay. have too much maintenance. But that pipe could be serviceable. Yeah. Okay. And the, and we will install, I, I didn't include them on here yet. 
they'll be on the next review. We, um, the manufacturer also likes to put in uh, monitoring ports so that you can see if there's any sediment buildup in there. Got it. Okay, that's helpful. Thanks, Chris. Yep. And if we stay on top of the deal to keep keep in catch basins clean, we should, it shouldn't be a problem at all. All right. Okay. So, Chuck, would you envision like after a, a major rainstorm that we'd probably check? catch basins and see what's in there and clean them out if it if it's starting to Absolutely. build up anytime yeah. there's a major rain i mean they need to be checked periodically anyway but yeah. anytime there's a major rain they need to be looked at and if there's mm -hmm. any you know if it's say the sediments i don't know how deep the basin's going to be it looks like maybe 12 feet or 10 feet maybe or eight feet if there's a couple of feet of stuff in there that needs to be cleaned yeah okay mm -hmm. And they need to definitely be checked in the spring to make sure that they're clean after the runoff and mm -hmm. fall before it snows. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, you know, they need to have some maintenance done to them. And yeah. I think yeah. they'll stay in pretty good shape. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Yeah, the minimum would be semi annually. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Look, there'll be more than that if I'm around. Be, being, <laughs> in the, being in the middle of that swale, I'm, I'm sure it'll probably be more often. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hey, Chris, can I ask just one more question? Of course. In terms of the, so it, this is going to be in fairly close proximity to the road. And so, you know, there's, aside from phosphorus runoff, you know, there's the potential for a lot of different types of freeze thaw that happen adjacent to the roadbed. Have, mm -hmm. have you seen warping of those tanks at all? Like, have you seen them basically, you know, where, where you know, where we have, um, you know, drastic change in water conditions on a regular basis, especially, mm -hmm. you know, spring, fall, where we sort of move into, you know, where we have more infiltration down through these systems typically. Have you seen those systems potentially start to fluctuate or warp or are those tanks big enough that they seem to be pretty, pretty staid? I, I have not heard of any um, warping at, at this time. Uh, or in all conversations that I've had with the manufacturer and all all the systems that they've done have any issues with that. Um, and they've done some shallower ones too that they put with rock depth and they haven't uh, seemed to have any issues with that, okay. which I, I found interesting. Yeah, that's interesting. All right, thanks. Yep. Any other questions out there? about this one. I think this one looks like a very good set system. I like the looks of it. Yeah, yeah. The fire annex is very similar. Um, and obviously this drawing is a little, um, a little bit out of date since the highway department changed up changed the grading and added in the retaining wall here by the fire annex that will be in the next round we've since we've put together these plans gotten updated survey information from our big crew and um, but we put this in here the, to the best of our knowledge um, and we'll, we'll adjust the locations that did, uh, for that updated topography um, this is a very similar system and Chris, the reason I mentioned the frost on this one is this one's much shallower. Yeah, it uh, is. It's really shallow, isn't it? When we when we went out there, we found obviously being so close to the Kingsbury branch, uh, ground was a little bit higher. It was close to four and a half feet or so. Um, but these tanks they allow a lot of flexibility, and so this this model that we have here. Um, it is uh, only two inches tall. Uh, there's there's a series of them there. There's five of them stacked on top of each other at two inches tall, about nine and a half inches, nine and a half to 10 inches in total height. Um, and the reason we need it to be that shallow is according to the state of Vermont rules, we have to be three feet above groundwater. Yeah, you're right at the water table there. 
So yeah, we were very close. And, and so we feel we can, with this system, it obviously spreads out the footprint quite a bit more. Um, but we have, uh, we're, we keep the, we keep that separation, um, and, and a, the ability to still infiltrate water and not have, have something out there that takes up space and that can't be unusable. Um, so these ones, as I, as I'm for, every, for everyone, um, similar, similar system, there's now a swale that the road crew has put in here that we will try and set this catch basin into, or we will set that catch basin into. Water will flow into here. We'll have another four feet um, uh, And this time we'll have an eight, which is basically the same size as the whole system, but we feel that water will spread out um, uh, since there's such void space uh, allowed in. Um, this will give a, give a little bit of time for some infiltration and uh, hopefully meet the, water, meet the water quality goals that we uh, are looking to meet. Um, and I know the original design had these, chamber, these elaborate chamber systems. Uh, they also proposed infiltration, but those are much deeper. They're at least four feet deep um, minimum. And so, so we, we feel that this system allows for that flexibility. Uh, for reference, I, I have the uh, manufacturer. So you can see that they're much smaller and there's many more of them in this view. There's five of them stacked on top of each other. Um, and I was talking with Chuck uh, during our meeting before this one. Uh, the one thing that we're, we're still gonna work through is just any overflow. Uh, at this point, I don't have any overflow, but I have an idea of putting it towards the far end so it gives time for water to run through and infiltrate as it goes before discharge out. Uh, zoomed in a little too far. Maybe somewhere in here or in here. Yeah, we're- Chris, what's the rail we're, cover on that one? Oops, I'm sorry. Uh, that'll, be, that'll be a foot. It, You'll have a be, foot of ground cover over the top of that? Yeah, so I believe to existing grade, we have about eight inches, uh, nine inches. Right here, you can see there was a, uh, just in this section, pretty shallow, yeah. um, but we can put in a proposed grade to reach at least a foot uh, without changing the grade uh, of the existing area too much. And this is gonna be right in the road that goes out through to that skating rink, right? Yeah, it will. And I, mm -hmm. I remember the loading on that before, and I, I uh, was, before this meeting, I was the post office design that I just submitted to Michael and Grace today. So I haven't reached out to uh, the manufacturer about that loading, but as I mentioned, with a foot of cover, these are generally uh, H20 rated, um, but being being grass area, I'll have to check into that. Obviously, since okay, well, I'm going in a different direction here right now. Okay. Will that bed create heat enough to keep that bottom from freezing, or are we going to have to insulate the top of that? Because they're going to plow out there. Yeah. Um, so. Again, that, that's one of the conversations that I had with the manufacturer about that. And they've indicated that even, even shallow installations like this have, have uh, they haven't found to, to be causing any issues or, or freezing. Um, okay. So that's something that I can, I can get more information from them if they have uh, particular examples of other places. Because I know they, they've a couple of these in Maine and uh, other places that have cold climates like Vermont. Right. Well, I, my thought is if if we plow that off, we have a cold winter and it freezes right straight down through that, that that's not going to be of much use come spring. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so, like I said, I had asked that question and I've gotten positive. So, I just uh, just wanted to throw it out there in case nobody 
had mentioned it. I, it's just, I've dealt with water for years in frozen ground. That's no fun. Mm -hmm. Chris, I had a quick question. So this is, this is being built basically in the floodplain, essentially. Yep. Yeah. 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 So there's a terrace, which is your, you know, your steeper, slightly steeper topography and the school is built on T essentially T1, right? So, um, you know, if this is, you know, when, you know, at high stands, if like in a 10 year or 20 year interval flood, there wouldn't be surprised that this is overtopped. Is that going to be an issue for longevity? Uh, given, given, uh, I've talked with the rivers program about this and they, they have no issues with the way the project is. Um, yes, there, there's a little potential for movement, uh, of the river, but, it's uh, at this point we we don't anticipate um, that too much of an issue with with these floods. Um, the whole area will be overtopped. And okay. so there's no way that, that with those, I mean, so it, you know, a decadal flood is not uncommon because they occur basically much more than every decade, right? So yeah, our hundred year floods occur every you know sixty to eighty years, really more more realistically, especially in the modern. Right. So there's. There, there's no way that like undercutting of this structure is going to be potentially problematic with it being built so so intimately into the floodplain. Um, uh, as I mentioned, we we've uh, talked with the rivers program, and they they haven't indicated that they're concerned about it. And okay. uh, we we uh, we don't think so. there will be either. Okay, thanks, Chris. So I, you know, just in picking up on what um, Chris is saying, um, I know I noticed that there's no overflow um, pipe on the other end of this, like there was on the other. But there could be a swale that that stays tight um, to the the bank from the school um, that could direct the water. Any overflow, you, you know, could go into a catch basin or um, as you get past the rink, um, the the Kingsbury branch moves away from um, that hillside, and there is a, a fairly um, open, wide area there of um, you know just flat land um, that's pretty much grown up to weeds. Um, there there, it, there could be some kind of overflow um, pit or basin there, um, you know, just a stone line or grass line thing that could catch, you know, in a major 10 year storm or, or, or worse, um, could catch water enough to, to maybe keep less of it going into the Kingsbury branch if there was an, oh, an overflow into that uh, infiltration basin. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that's a good point, Mike, Michael. Um, as I mentioned, that that was going to be uh, something that we we really dug into in, in our next round here. Okay. All right. And that, but that's a that's a great point. Um, so that might be might be a possibility. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it wouldn't take a lot of work out there to build a bermed pond out beyond that skating rink. No, that's what I was thinking, Chuck. It wouldn't take take much at all, really. I don't think. Yeah. No, nothing, it's it's kind of a jungle out there, so you know it's not it get used it gets used for anything else. Once you get beyond the ice rate, not much. Right. <laughs> but if you started putting your ditch material out there, you'd have berm right down through there, pretty good sized. Yep. A short time. Any other? Oh, I don't think I mentioned um, this site like, relatively small compared to, or the the amount of water that the site will capture is relatively small compared to the elementary school. Um, but we still looked at the amount of fossil removal and, as well as the sediment removal, and for that we have come up with an estimated uh, just about a pound per year for this set. And 
Oh, I gotta type. Uh, oh no, I don't. I'm looking at the wrong thing. About a pound per year for this, uh, this the annex site, and uh, about. Oh, we actually had quite that twenty nine hundred. That sounds. Hmm. I don't remember it being that, but I guess it. I guess it is. Uh, like I like I said, I mentioned I did use the higher range of um, estimated sediment loading for this. Uh, basically, an amount per acre that we use, and I did use the higher end. I could also look at the lower end just to give you guys a range. Uh, for the next for the next round at the next design. Uh, okay. And any other questions for Chris? I think that was mainly due to the fact that uh, a lot of captured at the fire and graveled area. We and some of it coming from the elementary school, um, quite a bit coming from Valley Lake Road. Mm -hmm. Whereas the wooded area uh, above Valley Lake doesn't provide probably quite as much. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there are a couple of driveways there too that could affect that a little bit, that spot. And any other questions for Chris? Diana, I see I your hand. I don't you see you, but I see your hand. <laughs> I'm just curious as to who's paying for all this. Well, so this is all being paid for pretty much by a grant, the design work. Um, and then my time um, is kind of serving as the town's match. Um, we'll see how close that comes to the match. Um, and then of course, you know, the actual implement, implementation of this will again go through a grant process. There's no way um, that the town could afford to do this without the support of grants. So it's, it's a long-term project, um, you know, probably within the, the year, um, you know, by next fall, we should have um, the 100% designs for all four sites. Um, and then those those will be our, our uh, tickets to uh, apply for other grant money. And I am, am pretty much certain that the Central Vermont Regional Planning Commission will be helping us in, in that grant process. So, so there must yeah. be some expectation that there is grant money. Otherwise, hopefully Regional Planning Commission wouldn't have been putting all this money towards the design phase. Yeah, they, they, they're looking long-term too. I mean, we, the, Starting this whole process, um, you know, it was pretty clear that, um, you know, that this whole thing would take a number of steps and a number of different grants in order for it to finally be a reality. Um, you know, and it could be who knows how long it will take, but. Um, okay. Thank you. Grace, I don't know if you have any thoughts on, on Diana's question too or comments to share, but. Yeah, I mean, I can't give you specific grant names right now, but we definitely have, you know, experience helping towns from, you know, 30% design to final design, which is what we're doing now to implementation and construction. So we are definitely here to help when we get to that stage. And I can back that up as well. Uh, we're moving to the implement stage on a project and uh, the DNK helped with, uh, back in 20. It's going to this summer mm -hmm. a bit over over the fall. And, uh, and then so, and those were both done, the design for uh, similar process as well as implementation with grant grant. Fund. Any other questions at all for Grace or Chris? No, I'm good. Okay. 
So um, well, thanks very much. I appreciate it. Thank you. So I, I have one question just for everybody's information. Oh. So um, obviously in the spring when the snow is gone, we'll do the testing for the Church Street Cabot Road project. Um, and we, it sounds like uh, Chris has sent a 60% uh, design um, for the um, site between the fire station and the um, uh, post office, um, which will, will, will we do you anticipate maybe having the hearings for those when both um, sites are, are have the 60% design work done or, or should we anticipate um, um, hearing soon for the um, the um, site between the fire station and, and the post office. Okay. I would say, oh, do you want to go ahead, Grace? No, go ahead. I, I was going to say, I, I would say that's entirely up to how quickly the town wants to move through these. Um, okay. We could wait to do an investigation uh, at the other, at the last site uh, and do both of them together. Um, okay. But we, we also do, we, ha we have accounted for essentially four different uh, meetings for each of the four projects. So okay. ha having done two right now, you know, helps, helps with that. Mm -hmm. But it, it's all in how quickly you want to move through them. If you don't mind stretching that out a little bit, we can do them both together. And that way, um, you know, you only have to see my face once more. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, well, we'll figure that out. We'll think about that one, I guess. <laughs> and we we can talk about that more as we go through yeah, like, yeah. When, when you review the post office and um, okay. take that. Okay. And I'll share that what Chris sent um, with the select board and, and with you, Chuck, and you know anyone else that's interested will pass that around. Thanks, Michael. Um, good. Well, I think um, if there aren't any more questions. Um, we can let Chris and Grace um, say goodbye. I'm sure they, unless they want to hang out for the rest of the select board meeting. <laughs> I'll hop I off really and get some on. dinner, but I appreciate your time. Okay. I'm going to, I'm going to go get some dinner as well, but I just, <laughs> thank, thank you both. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Bye. Bye. Chris, uh, I, your name seemed familiar to me, so I was curious and I, I Googled you and see that you worked at Norwich or you work oh. at Norwich. Yeah, I do. I, I'm an alumni from Norwich 2010. I think that oh, was right. Well, Chris, I bet we crossed paths at least briefly. Yeah. Yeah. I'll tell, so, uh, I'll tell Adam that you're doing a hell of a job. Hey, thanks. <laughs> and Adam, every once in a while. He's a good but, dude. Good. Thanks, Chris. I appreciate your work. Have a good night, everybody. Yeah. You take care, man. Bye. Okay. Um, so next, next on the agenda is just to review um, the different positions elected and appointed, um, those that have been filled, um, those that are need to be filled, um, and I have that. I'll, I'll, I have have that set up so that we can screen share it and uh, basically just go through the town report uh, listing, um, and I've marked it up a little bit with red pen to to for the discussion. Um, Mostly what we'll, what we'll be doing is kind of just uh, becoming aware of what, what needs to be filled. And if anybody has any ideas of people that might be interested, we'll also be posting those positions that need to be filled um, and hope, hoping that some people will step forward. So, so let me see, uh, let me try to screen share this thing that I have. Um, Whoops, hang on. Okay. So um, we'll just go through this. I basically copied it from the town report and uh, wrote on it a bit and then scanned it. So um, so we have a, we, we did reelect Steve Freihofner as our uh, moderator. Um, and as a town clerk, uh, Robin Durkee was elected Select board member um, Chris was elected to that position. Um, Bob Martin was reelected um, to the as a lister. And then um, with the auditors 
at this point, all three positions are open. Um, as of this evening, I uh, received an email from Skip Lindsay um, that he he has resigned um, as an auditor. So we the town basically has no auditors at the moment. There's one person that's emailed me that um, is interested in the position. Um, and I had kind of directed him to talk to Skip about the position to, to see if he wanted to make a commitment to that. So, um, and he, the per, this person that is interested emailed that he hasn't had a chance to talk to Skip yet. So we'll kind of wait and see on that and, and I'll do a follow up um, for, for that. But, and um, Chris, you had mentioned that some, you, you had spoken to some other, was it for the auditor or was is for the board of adjustment? Yeah. Well, no, it was for the auditor actually. It was for the, the auditor, auditor. Uh huh. Yeah, um, and I actually got to speak briefly with Skip uh, the midday today when I went down to the town office to sign my forms. Um, and he sort of gave me a sense of uh, what, what the job entails. So okay. I will, uh, I'll, I'll try to, to, to talk to the two folks I've spoken with and see if I can get some traction on okay. someone that might be able to be appointed. Okay, so these are elected officials um, and the select board can appoint, because the positions are open, we can appoint someone. Um, I don't know if, be, if we're gonna be having this special town meeting, um, maybe we could actually vote. Um, although maybe we shouldn't complicate things too much. So we not do, Michael, because we, the next normal election would be next March. So when we appoint, they'd be in the office until the next election. Year. Yeah. yeah. So why don't we let's plan on doing that because it could yeah. really complicate and it's slow really, down. It's really going to be a little complicated and it would just make it work. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So uh, Ron Wells was reelected as a collector of delinquent taxes. Um, the town law agent was eliminated by the state. Um, and then for cemetery commissioners, um, there were um, some write in votes and from what I could see from the election results, um, Jamie Dutill and Susan Stightley were elected to those positions. Um, so one of them would be replacing Richard Patton um, and the other would be filling in that open position that's there. Um, and Diana, do you know how, what the uh, term length is for a cemetery commissioner? General, it's five years. Five years, okay. And so, I believe they, uh, Jamie got enough votes for each one, but um, yeah. I believe they've agreed that she's gonna take the five year and Susan's gonna take the two year. Okay, all right. So um, moving on to the library trustees, um, there have been some changes there um, in, in the electing, um, uh, there were four uh, library trustees that were elected. Um, a couple of them had been appointed earlier this year when Brandy and Robin um, um, had to resign um, based on a conflict of interest for their um, positions that they held. Um, so um, Stephen Murphy, uh, Michelle Duford um, are basically replacing um, Jack Travelstad and Ginger Etkin, um, and then Elizabeth Hansen and Sarah Van Hoff, who were appointed, um, have been uh, also elected. And I, I believe at this point, Elizabeth Hansen is serving as the, the chair of that group. Diana? So, you know, Michelle has uh, res resigned. Oh. She's gonna be the assistant librarian, so she can't really be both. So there is okay. still an empty, library okay. stuff. they're still better off than they have been for a long time yeah okay yeah. well that's good to know thank you diana for that um and let's see moving on um so the real estate agent is another position that the state uh, has eliminated um our two hazen union reps from town are both um um serving out terms um and then the Woodbury uh, rep um, to the uh, Union Elementary School Board, um, Kim Silk, 
uh, is uh, chose not to continue um, or be to go for re-election and Ann Peltz has uh, been elected into his position. Um, and the justice of the peace are all good. So, um, so we'll move on to appointed officials. Um, so uh, road foreman needs to be reappointed. Um, the animal control officer uh, needs to be reappointed. The dangerous building officer needs to be reappointed. And I, I haven't contacted any of these um, sort of yearly reappointments. I haven't contacted anyone yet at all. Um, so uh, as the select board chair, I'm kind of the default health officer um, because we don't have a health officer. But I think when we put out a, a notice um, requesting people step up to different empty positions, the health officer will be, will be listed um, and maybe someone will come forward. Um, if not, I guess what I'll probably do is there is training for that and I will probably try to fit that training in. Um, there is an issue in town where it would be, help, it'd be helpful to have a knowledge, knowledgeable health officer to deal with. Um, the forest fire warden and the assistant forest fire warden are appointed by the state. Um, and I don't know, Paul, does somebody contact you and um, Jacob or how no, does that happen? Perpetual will be in there forever till we quit. That's how that works. Okay. <laughs> All right. As far as I know. <laughs> All right. Okay. So um, the planning commission is pretty well set. My term. Um, is up for reappointment. Um, and I, I do plan on continuing to serve on the planning commission. Um, we, do, we have some really good people in place there right now. So my, I, in my role is, um, I kind of consider it a minor role. I'm uh, sort of sitting on the back seat, kind of trying to keep up with what's going on. Um, and we did appoint a new member to that uh, planning commission on February 8th. Um, so we've got a pretty good uh, and functioning um, town planning commission right at the moment. And, and we are working um, with the Central Vermont Regional Planning Commission who we contracted to help us uh, form uh, a new town plan. So, and things are moving right along there. So, um, Bob is good still as a zoning administrator, Bob Martin. Um, so there, there is um, all of the present zoning board of adjustment um, members are um, not in need of reappointment. Diana has expressed an interest in that uh, open position. Um, uh, Chance is still on. I think he's also expressed an interest to me. Okay. Are you still on, Chance? Hmm. Who else did? Yeah, I was trying to find my unmute button. Sorry, guys. Chance. Is that a position that you're interested in also, Chance? Yes, sir. Okay. All right. Um, you have to be the chairman. What? You have to, they're looking for a chairman. That's why I yeah. offered because we've already used up the uh, attorneys in town and it has to be somebody who can... <laughs> Decision, but probably do that. Right out of the gate. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> None of the other members want to be the chairperson. So. <laughs> oh, that's right. Because Mary Clark got done. Yeah. Yeah. Mary was. Yeah. So that's. So, um, yeah, I guess that that'll be something for discussion then about because there are. Is there a limit, Diana, in the number of people that can serve on that board? I don't know. Okay. Well, that's something to look into. Um, they usually get five, so. Yeah. Well, we'll we'll look into. There's state statue on that. On that, we can look into that. All right. Check that one out. Um, so. Okay, and then on the conservation commission, um, there are three members, present members, that are up for reappointment. Um, Paul Council, who's serving as the chair, at the moment. Um, Chad Wallers and myself. Um, 
the planning commission or the conservation commission will be meeting uh, next week and um, we'll, we'll discuss this. Um, so I'll, ha I'll have a sense of who is planning on staying on. My guess is that all three of us will still be there um, that are up for reappointment. Um, Susan Sawyer has kind of been an um, uh, ex officio sort of member of the Conservation Commission. We keep her in the loop on stuff. Um, occasionally she will send comments, but um, doesn't really actively attend the meetings. Um, she's kind of an honorary longtime Conservation Commission member. Um, and Andy Rosen um, had sent a communication to the Conservation Commission that she felt that, um, that she should probably um, no longer be on the commission. Uh, we haven't really heard anything definite from her. There was a comment that she might be moving out of town. Um, so I'm not really sure what's up with Andy, um, but we'll figure that out at our next Conservation Commission meeting. I would like to continue as the uh, Central Vermont Regional Planning Commission uh, rep or commissioner. Um, maybe at some point I can get somebody else on the Planning Commission interested in, in that position or, or there's also an opportunity for an alternate to, uh, to the Regional Planning Commission. There, um, Jane is up for reappointment as the uh, solid waste management district rep. Um, we'll get in touch with her. I got a letter from the solid waste management district um, kind of wondering who will be the new um, rep or if Jane will continue. There's another entity that I would like to have um, listed um, in the, you know, from now until the future is Central Vermont Fiber, CV Fiber. Um, this is basically a, a municipality um, that's been formed in the central Vermont region to bring high speed internet to everybody, no matter how far you might live out on the back road in Woodbury. Um, and that's, their, that's their reason for being and forming as a municipality. Um, and we have had representatives to that in the past. Um, Skip Lindsay was a rep. And um, then there was a, a fellow named Trevor I remember his last name, um, who, but presently we don't have a representative. To that. Um, and you know, a big issue for a lot of people in rural towns, Woodbury included, is um, having access to uh, high speed internet, um, which is what this, this entity is doing. So um, that'll be another appointment that um, I'd like to advertise for. Um, and then uh, Gary was with us. I don't know if he still is, but he is up um, for a reappointment as our constable. Um, let's see, uh, energy coordinator. I've always kind of uh, been in that position. I've hardly ever done much of anything related to it. Um, I do know a little bit of, um, about some of the issues and how to get help. Um, so I'm fine with staying there unless uh, um, somebody else, maybe we would we would advertise for it and somebody else might take, take it up, I don't know. Um, and then the assistant town clerk and the assistant town treasurer, those are basically up to our town clerk and town treasurer to um, appoint the, those people. Um, and Chance, you are here. Um, would you like to continue as our emergency management director? No, oh, at the board's pleasure, sure. Yeah. Okay. All right. So we will probably reappoint you um, at our next meeting. Hopefully, we'll have indications from everybody and um, whether or not they want to continue and, and either at the next select board meeting. Uh, hopefully, at the next select board meeting, we'll re, uh, appoint a, a round of folks. So um, need to check in with Ron Wells. Um, Skip said that he would continue as the E91 coordinator. So check in with Ron and uh, Ken Silt. Um, did, did you get a did you get an um, email from Jim Schweithelm? Not that I've seen yet. He's interested in being the tree warden, so you can. I'll 
make sure he gets to you before the next meeting because Ron okay. said that was fine with him. <laughs> okay. All right. Yeah. So yeah, I'll, I'll look for that um, email. And then we need to check in with Kim Silk about uh, his role as a pound keeper. And then I'll, I'll send an email to um, Peter Peltz and s ask him to kind of check in with the Woodbury Fund Committee um, folks. Let's see, let's see how many people. That, and that's pretty much the list um, for things. Um, I am fine with doing you know, some of the checking up on these folks. Um, and uh, hopefully um, at the next meeting we'll have a, there might still be some open um, positions, um, but hopefully we'll have a round of names to, to make some appointments. Any questions at all about that or any thoughts? I'm good for now. Okay, all right. Um, yeah. There is one, one other position that um, I think I will, Let's see where. Uh, it's kind of always been empty. Um, yes, it's Transportation Advisory Committee um, rep. That's um, yeah. kind of a, com a committee that's part of the Central Vermont Regional Planning Commission. Most towns have a representative to that, and they basically review. Um, VTRANS uh, projects in the central Vermont area. And um, uh, they're basically offer input um, on projects that they feel should be implemented. Um, and, you know, it's kind of an advisory committee to VTRANS. Um, we've never had anybody that, to my knowledge, that's ever been on that. Um, so probably, you know, that'll be probably listed also. and. Um, uh, and maybe somebody will step into that position. Maybe somebody on the planning commission would be interested in that. Um, okay. Um, so the next, any questions at all about this? All right. So uh, we've got one more um, agenda item for tonight. Get rid of this. Um, oh, Gary's still here. Um, Gary, while you're here, are, are you interested in being reappointed as a town constable? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, all right, thank you. You didn't leave soon enough. <laughs> <laughs> I'll teach you. Right. We can be really cruel and say, if no one's here to object, we'll just reappoint people. <laughs> <laughs> so some quick updates. Um, personnel policy, I haven't sent that into Jill year yet. I will work on it tomorrow. I just wanted to give it a good read through. There was one change that uh, Robin brought up um, last meeting that I haven't added to it, um, but I plan on sending that to her uh, tomorrow. So um, the school lease, we are really, really close to coming to an agreement for, um, for the lease. Um, the uh, Union School District uh, sent the lease um, to their lawyer who um, contacted the Agency of Education for them to review it, um, kind of as a cautionary measure, I think, for the fact that some of the lease negotiations that we had been um, having prior were uh, definitely significantly uh, changed by a, a ruling from the Agency of Education um, prior. So I think they just wanted to, to have them look at it again. Um, and we have a meeting scheduled, um, Norm Manetkin, Patrick Flood and I, who are sort of the Woodbury Lease Committee will be meeting with the Union School District uh, next Tuesday to, um, to review um, what I think is the, will be the final draft uh, of the lease. I just received the draft um, that's come back from the Union School District uh, came like 20 minutes before the meeting started. So I haven't had a chance to look at it, but Norman and Patrick and I will review that um, probably this week sometime um, and send, you know, um, if we, if there are changes that we don't like, um, and I think they're pretty much minor, mostly approving changes that we had sent to them. Um, 
the big issue was trying to figure out how to um, the insurance uh, for the building. The the uh, school district's um, insurer, um, which is a state a school insurance uh, program, uh, wouldn't allow the school district to insure the building because they don't own the building. So the well, the agreement that we came up with is that the town, um, starting with the beginning of the fiscal year 22, will insure the building and then uh, uh, whatever the town pays for that insurance will be reimbursed to the town from the school district. Um, so um, it, it's not gonna be a cost to the town. We will be the town, the school and the grounds will be insured underneath the town um, through, the, through their insurance, um, but it will, the and then the town will be reimbursed um, for that expense from the school district. <coughs> So hopefully, um, maybe even by our next meeting, um, there will be a, uh, an agreed upon lease that we can also review and um, approve um, as a select board. Uh, let's see what else is here. Um, oh, so the library roof repair. Um, I met with Larry Eldred last week. Um, and we just kind of, we couldn't look at the roof too much, but we both know what's underneath the snow on it. Um, and of course, the big issue, again, with that, um, another complication is that the annex, um, the original building that was built as uh, there where the annex and the library are is owned by the school district. And of course, the library is owned by the town. So there's, it's a common building. The two buildings are together. It's one building essentially now. And of course, it has one roof. So, um, what Larry and I talked about, and we'll need to talk about it with the Union School District, is that um, you know, I started to put together an RFP, and, and Larry will review that um, once I have a draft, um, so that we'll have something to put out pretty soon um, for to, to get a, bids from contractors on. Um, and um, what Larry and I discussed, uh, probably the smoothest thing to for this project is that the town um, will put out the RFP, we'll have the school district look at it, uh, basically with Larry um, Eldred looking at it. Um, if he is okay with it, I'm sure that the school district board would be okay with it. Um, the town will uh, put out the RFP um, and then probably jointly will uh, select a contractor based on the bids. Um, and then the town will oversee the project. The school district will reimburse the town um, or, um, for the uh, square footage of the roof that um, covers the annex building. Um, we figured that would be the best way to, br to break down um, the expense. Yes, Diana. I just wonder how you finally came to the decision that the annex is owned by the school and not the town. Well, I, um, I, I talked to um, or, uh, Peter Peltz and I talked to Patrick Flood um, and then I talked to Larry and um, they both Larry and Peter remember that the building was built by the town, by town members, but it was paid for by the Woodbury School District from uh, school funds. Uh, wow. So the fact that they paid for the um, the materials to me that says that it's owned by the school was was owned by the Woodbury School District and therefore is now owned by the Union School District. Um, and you know we can try to dig in our vaults and see if there's actually a, a deed. Um, I'm I'm fine with that, but um, I, you know I kind of trust Larry was pretty definite on what happened, and um, I'm going to just trust him that that's true um, um so so that's what's going to happen with the school roof um hopefully i'll be able to i'm kind of taking the the old rfp for the school um and um using that to put together um the rfp for the library annex building it's definitely a, a much smaller project um 
and then Larry, who who is a little bit more familiar with all this stuff, will will um, help me kind of finish it. We'll work together on it. And that's pretty much. I knew there was something else I wanted to do an update on, but um, I still haven't thought of what it was. <laughs> um, I guess it can't be too important. Are there any questions about any of those those updates at all? Yes, Robin. My question is, should the personnel policy be reviewed by Chris before you send it off? I am going to be sending the personnel policy to Chris. And, um, and then it, it, will, it will also be going through a review process. I want to send it to Jill Muir, um, the, the passive um, VLCT person um, who's, who's been reviewing it um, all along. And um, just get any, she could, she'll have any sense of whether there's anything that the state requires or different state labor laws that we haven't addressed, um, which I think we're pretty good on because she brought those up with her last review. Um, and then it'll come back to us um, and hopefully um, can sit down and work on the parts that still need to be worked on with our town treasurer. And then we'll, I would like the personnel policy to be reviewed by our road crew, um, our road commissioner, by our town clerk and town treasurer, because um, you're all a part of the personnel policy. Your, your uh, positions and jobs um, are addressed in the personnel policy. Um, so it, it will, you know, and then if there are any suggestions from any of any of the employees or, or town officials that are in that personnel policy, um, you know, we'll make some more changes. And, and then we'll probably have a fin final vetting um, by a lawyer. Um, and we could, I don't know, I wanted to see if the VLCT, um, you know, they're, they do give us free um, reviews and advice up to a certain point. Um, they do have lawyers that could probably review it. And we would pay a small fee for them to, to give a, a you know a, a legal look at the personnel policy. Um, so, but and of course the goal is to have this in place before we, be, um, you know, are, are interviewing people for this third full time road crew position. Um, so we, we want to try to have this done, hopefully by the first of May. Um, That's kind of that's the plan in my in my head anyway. And if anybody has any other ideas, you know, I'm, I'm certainly open to to the process or um, or any anything else that might that should be thought of or, or addressed in that process. I'm good. Okay. Um, any other questions about the the lease or the library roof repair? No. Nope. Okay. Good over here. That's it on the agenda. Um, mm -hmm. Any, any other uh, further, any other business <laughs> that anybody wants to bring up? Somebody get rid of the snow. Uh -huh. Yeah. Well, it, weather's going to work on it a little bit this week. Remember, it's March. March is a torturous, laborious month. Yep. It'll just warm up, then it'll go back down to five degrees for four or five days. Not where Chuck is, but where we are. Yeah, <laughs> and that sounds like next week it's supposed to get cold again, but yeah, not, of course maybe it is. not it's, as extreme. It's, it's March. Yep. One step forward, two steps yep. back, and eventually we get to April. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And who knows? Well, April's no guarantee. Who knows? Right? Yeah. April's a crapshoot. Yep. When yeah. do you come back, Chuck? I'll be back around the 20th of April. Okay. Okay. All right. Yep. Smart man. Yeah. And something really I thought he was going to say the week after the snow left. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Two days after the snow left. <laughs> well, hopefully there'll still be some mud for you to look at. Yeah, we'll you. leave you a little bit. Yeah, we'll leave you a bit of mud. That's just mud. part of the reason I'm coming that early is because okay. I want to be there for it. Uh, okay. All right. Thanks. That's, cool. That's great. <laughs> Anything else at all from from anybody? All right. Do, do I hear the the golden motion um, that we all like to hear? So moved. All those in favor? 
Bye. Bye. Okay. Good night, everybody. Good night, everybody. Thank you.